Welcome to Bad Gear, the show about the world's most hated audio tools. Scandinavian countries appear to be very synth friendly. They're not only home to prominent online synth personalities, some of the leading music tech manufacturers have their home base in this part of Europe. Today we are going to talk about the Klavia Nord Lead 2. This 1997 classic is the successor to one of the first, if not the first, virtual analog synth. While the pioneering OG Nord Lead didn't face much competition in 1995, version 2 had to stand its ground against instruments of manufacturers like Yamaha, Roland, Quasimidi and Axis. Seems like people were not messing around in the 90s. At the first glance, the Nord Lead 2 is ticking a lot of elegant, Nordic and, first and foremost, red boxes. A metal enclosure spreading an aura of indestructibility, a functional user interface with all the parameters you would expect from a real analog and Klavia was kind enough to print a little guide to the not-so-analog functions on the front panel. The slightly over-designed stone mod wheel and wooden pitch thingy are still cool almost 30 years after the introduction of the first version. Number 2 comes with a higher polyphony count of 16 voices even without the costly voice expansion of its predecessor. Ignoring the digital man behind the curtain, the UI had almost no learning curve for the analog synth aficionados of the 90s. Two clean and clear oscillators, colorful noise, a huge palette of versatile sync sounds ring modulation and wild yet musical FM amp and filter envelopes excel at everything plucky and punchy and there's a dedicated modulation envelope. The filter is maybe the most controversial element of the synth engine. Yes, resonance more or less instantly kills all your precious low frequency content. But the five filter modes allow for sound shaping with surgical precision. Certainly not everyone's cup of tea. To my surprise, the notch low pass combination left the nether regions of the frequency spectrum mostly untouched, even at higher resonance settings. I experienced a lot of issues with stuck notes, so I used the shift distortion panic mode more often than the slightly lackluster distortion. The LFOs are easy to use and the echo mode and simple arpeggiator are great. Unison and Portamento. All good. Patch management didn't age so well. Sure, it's great to have four program slots at your fingertips. And the unit is four voice multi timbral, but everything beyond program 40 is read only, and saving the configurations of all four slots a so called performance. is only possible when using an SRAM-based battery-backed PCMCIA card. You can set up layers and splits though. Morph lets you, well, morph between two settings
and is about as awesome as the four individual outputs. I've read a lot of negative comments about the keybed, but I personally had no issues with it. There's no aftertouch, although the unit is capable of responding to it via MIDI. The percussion kits are surprisingly fresh sounding and highly tweakable. MIDI implementation leaves little to be desired, there are no FX and thanks to my dear friend Alfred Oslo for his Nord Lead 2 in pristine condition. Old Nords are not exactly cheap. Virtual analog synths have come a long way since the mid 90s. Can the Nord Lead 2 still hold up in today's music tech landscape and is it cold as ice? You have already heard the Nord in today's intro tune. This doesn't seem to be its home turf, but it works somehow. The synth has a reputation of sounding very upfront. I wanna know if it's capable of more subtle tones too. I'm not sure if I would call these sounds warm, but they fit the chill arrangement nicely with plenty of depth. I especially enjoyed the percussion patches. Let's tighten them up with a compressor, but leave the other sounds dry in the second jam. Probably wouldn't sell your analog Juno for this, but I like the more aggressive take on the subject and FM really hits hard. Again, Clavier's experience in the field of digital drums becomes obvious. The rise of virtual analog synths in the 90s gave a push forward to dance music of all genres and countries. I wanna know if we can summon some of that spirit in this polar ice cap melting Suomi soundy side tech trance. The Clavia Nord Lead 2 is a road-ready hands-on synthesizer with plenty of professional features and a very distinct character. Sure, there are more organic sounding instruments out there, you have to decide whether you want resonance or bass and it sounds a little dusty for a modern synth, but that's not necessarily a disadvantage in a time of omnipotent plug-in monstrosities and 200 bucks mini Moog clones. What is more, I find it fascinating how grown up the Nord lead is for a digital instrument of that era. It's responsive, mostly stable and it can definitely take some abuse. But the most astonishing thing about it is that Clavia anticipated that we, the people of the future, will need a dedicated space on our keyboards for all the walkers. Thanks for watching and see you next time! Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode, feel free to like, subscribe, become a patron and leave a comment what other kind of gear you would like to see and hear on the show. 